Okay, so this is Park 6 2018 Facility Plan meeting with the uh, State Construction Department and the School Facilities Division of that department. We'll uh, introduce ourselves first. Amber Leach, Planning. Charlie Kaufman, Planning. Troy Decker, Planning. John Rex, Project Manager. Go ahead, school, go ahead, school district, introduce yourselves. All right, Terry Garden, IR Facilities Director, Park County 6. Ray Schulte just joined me in my office, so he's online now as well. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. And Tom, it looks like Tom's trying to get on. We just don't have any audio on him yet. I think I just got the phone going. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. We always appreciate uh, you guys joining us, and it's a blessing that uh, we can do. I'm sure you appreciate the video conferencing when when needed. So we do appreciate you uh, joining us, and and the blessing of not maybe traveling down here at times. So with that, we're going to go ahead and just go uh, through this. Uh, we've kind of developed a system over the last several years where. A lot of Ray and you probably remember the old the old days of uh, the facility plans. They lasted a lot longer. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of the technical stuff up on the front side of these. Uh, we're, I'm going to go right through them uh, because we've already, already verified. If there's something to say, great. If not, we can move on. What we want to do really with all of us on here is to maximize our opportunity to talk about the things that are most pressing and and uh, and then move on from there. So with that, uh, we'll just go ahead and start the facility plan meeting. Um, I did I did uh, just take some Google Earths and, of each of your campuses and put on here. Um, so just as a record, not a big deal at all. Uh, tracks and deeds, these are important because they affect your block grant and uh, specifically the acreage affects your groundskeepers. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the webcam so our streaming's uh, a little bit better and we don't have too much of uh, audio feedback or anything. So we do appreciate you doing that, and uh, this does mean something. We want to make sure you get what you deserve. Uh, uh, our data is is forwarded to WDE, uh, and um, we've worked really hard. Charlie specifically has worked really hard with uh, WDE to make sure that uh, your your uh, the data going back and forth is accurate. Uh, land disposition, uh, this was presented at the commission meeting. Uh, the disposition did come before the commission meeting, and that was the old Sunset Elementary School, so that's all official and updated in name. Property profiles, uh, these have to do with uh, when you talk about your square footage, there's we get ADM from WDE, and that affects uh, when we, we plug that into the square foot calculator, producing allowable, and uh, that then uh, is part of the generating of your major maintenance uh, monies each year. So that's an important part of this. Also, these addresses uh, are verified, uh, sent to WDE, and I think our databases are pretty close now right. with regard to these addresses because, uh, again, it has a, a, an effect on their record as well. Yeah, there's usually a little bit of update every year that we have to do with them. We did ask this question on minor physical alter alterations to require floor plan updates, and so we appreciate you letting know that. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, you uh, do not have any building leases, so nothing to report there. And then you guys have verified the enhancements that we have captured are accurate. So that's important because those affect your allowable square footage as well. Um, so, with regard to Valley now down here, uh, elementary school, uh, that will be sure, reassessed? Uh, so, let me talk to that a little bit. Uh, this next fall, around August, I think probably around August, we're going to send FBA out again for the next round of uh, buildings that have just been completed. Uh, Valley will be on that to be measured, assessed, and to have the addition added into our system. So, we just wanted to make sure we let you know that. Um, we'll get that schedule out when we get everything arranged for FBA to go back out again. 
Then Glenn, Glenn Livingston, it looks like you guys have had some changes uh, with regard to access to classrooms. Maybe did you guys move any walls at all, or is it just more of uh, putting in doors from the hallway? We moved one wall and took probably 40 square feet out of an office and turned that into a hallway. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, uh, Charlie, if he hasn't already, we'll send you a floor plan of that. You did. Uh, Terry, did you get that email from me for Glenn Livingston with the floor plan and the location information? I got the email. I haven't opened it to, to try to do anything with it yet, though. Okay. Um, so basically what we need you to do is just to mark the area on there uh, that you updated. And like I gave also the location information so that way you know uh, how we've classified it. So that way when we send FDA out to do those minor alterations, uh, we can have just point them to where they need to go instead of having to do the whole building. So it's right. basically really, Terry, identifying which wall was moved, which room it affected, or rooms it affected, and that's about it. And if you can help us with that, uh, that would be valuable, and then we can get a proposal from FDA uh, to be accurate, and then they'll come out and remajor. Okay. Okay, so appropriations here. This is always an important part. State statute requires us to... Uh, revert monies as uh, uh, once a year, um, and so as <laughs> as monies have become tighter, however, we're having legislative uh, requests sometimes on the fly to see what monies are sitting out there uh, yesterday. So uh, it's kind of interesting. But anyway, we do appreciate reviewing these each year. Um, so you guys, uh, with regard to the two elementary schools and the designs on those, we had a good discussion, I think, last year, Ray, on this, uh, and um, your elementary capacity is at 76.55%, um, and so we're not going to touch this money, we're just going to sit there. The, basically, the designs are shelved at this point, and when and if uh, the elementary percentage gets up to about 90% or more, that's when we'll revisit this. Until then, uh, they're just sitting there on the shelf and waiting for increase in capacity when and if that happens. The 2697 is valid. And uh, do I understand that's still in warranty phase? Yeah, Ray had a question for you. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah. Um, Troy, would you remind me again? Uh, Looking at Livingston and Sunset at about 50% of the expenses, uh, and that 50% that covered the architectural fee. What's what's the remaining 50% for? Um, I don't know if that's all architecturally captured. <clears throat> I'd have to take a look at it, Ray. Um, I think we had some soft costs for like testing and inspection, owner's representation, that type of stuff built into that budget. But I'd have to take a look at it to be sure and tell you exactly what it was. So there's, it, there was a budget, looks like the uh, budget of about $750,000, $740,000 but that's all that's all for design, correct? Yeah. We'll probably end up pulling that back. That's correct. And then, you know, when we if and when we end up funding those projects, we'll go back and ask for those soft costs to be added back in. So you're thinking potentially where okay, so I think do I understand your question then, Ray, is uh, I mean I think we're all agreed with this is yes, this is only design related. These two appropriations. That's correct. <clears throat> so that's yeah. the, to your first question. Uh, where we are in the design would have to be looked at and, remi and reminded. Uh, and were you asking that as well? Where in the design are we at? Well, I think I think we're at ninety-five percent on design. So I would assume that 
we've we've pretty much paid the architect everything except for construction work, uh, construction management. But it, it's it's fine. I was just curious. Um, we understand we're not going forward on that for for some time, and and I was just curious what those what those numbers really reflect because it seems like we've spent more than that. We did. That's a, a, looking at your numbers, it's a, according to that, we spent about 360000 or maybe just a few thousand more than three sixty. Maybe that's right. I think we spent 80000 on Sandstrom before we canceled their project. Ray, I, I don't know if Tom's bill for everything yet for uh, for JGA. Yeah, I think I have everything in I'm for sure. he said yes. JGA. He's billed for everything. Okay, so it almost project manager report. Oh sure. Well, we need we need to look at the accounting on that and make sure that everything from JGA has been entered. Well, we need to make sure that gets paid up, be, you know, before that money that extra money's pulled out of there. We're gonna we might be sitting on a bill with no funding. That's a possibility too. I don't know exactly where we're at, but uh, this report here will help clear a little bit of it up. Just do all projects. You know, I think we need to give. I think we need to give John more uh, more school districts to do. He's not busy enough. He's not smiling this morning. All projects. Uh, I don't know. You might want to just do one at a time because we've got about forty security projects in there. Okay. So here's the remodel. That's the one going out. Yeah, for Glen Lake. It's the first one in twenty twenty. Yep. A little bit better. Um, we're showing about ninety-five thousand that's still unspent for the architectural contract on Glen Libby, and then the budget money in excess of that that we're looking at is uh, looks like about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for soft costs such as owner's overhead, design contingency, uh, owner's representation, and special inspections and testing. That's on Glenn Livingston. Okay. Now we'll go to uh, 2669. Um, we've got 62,000 remaining to be built on design for sunset. And there's about seventy-five, seventy-six thousand dollars out there for soft costs, such as commissioning and contingency and design and special inspections and testing. But again, you know, if and when these projects move forward, we're probably going to have to blow the dust off these plans and come back and and uh, have either the architect, if they're still in business, uh, of record go through it, or have Another architect pick it up and, and 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 create a design based off the programming that we know, uh, and make sure everything is up to current codes and requirements. So there'll be more work related to to that in, in regards to design. So we'll have both a design and a construction appropriation in the future if and when these projects move forward. Okay. Um, John, this John, this is Ray. Are you are you guys thinking of uh, pulling back those soft costs at the moment? Well, I, I think we I think we need to, Ray. Um, you know, the legislators are, are are pretty hot and heavy on us to bring back as much money as we can. They're looking for it everywhere, and 
it's kind of hard for us to justify leaving it sitting there based on what we're looking at for enrollment percentages right now. Right. Yeah, I, John, I, I understand that completely. Just um, my, my only question is don't, let's pull back the soft costs, but um, you need to leave us, obviously need, you need to leave enough money to pay the bills that are going to happen. Oh, absolutely. Here. I, I think Tom and I should get together and take a look at that and, and try to figure out where we're at. And I would even recommend maybe leaving a little additional just in case because we don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. We we certainly don't need to sit on additional monies if we don't have an immediate plan to spend it. But it sounds like we've already spent some of that. I know last year uh, we were we were asked to go ahead to the I don't know 95 percent on the drawings, which added to our costs, which is fine. We just need to make sure we pay those bills. That's all I was asking about. Yeah, and I don't even know, uh, quite honestly, without looking, how how much JGA's built yet. I'd have to look at their last pay app and see how far along they were on, on that schedule of values. We just received the final documents from them but I don't think they've invoiced that work yet. So, I mean, we just need to touch base with them and find out where they're at. And, yeah, I think and there's then, probably going to be a little bit more involved with that discussion because their, uh, their contract, I think, included bidding and potentially even construction administration. So we might need to amend their contract down as well to release them from that responsibility. I'm pretty sure uh, if it isn't already expired that their contract deadline is near is near that point. So we need to wrap it up and make sure that that uh, we release them from their liability as well and negotiated what that final price is going to be uh, for the deliverables that we've gotten to date. And that should be fairly simple because we asked for a price breakdown on all that stuff uh, initially as well. Okay, District John, we'll let you guys work this out in the coming weeks, months, whatever you guys need to do, and I just noted it here. Uh, Valley, again, is complete, warranty, period, revisit next year. Yeah. yeah that's pretty close. Okay, security projects. Terry's favorite, security projects. <laughs> Amber, I'm going to ask you, when did you download this uh, information that's in your chart? December. Okay. Charlie and Troy were gracious enough to answer for you. Yes, I downloaded it in December, and as we were talking, I pulled it back up, and it reflects the same numbers. Um, it may be the same number, but uh, a lot of things have changed. Okay. So... I'm just going to do a quick rundown and then I'm going to bring you up to date on where we're at with the status of your request, Terry. Uh, but uh, I'm required uh, I'm required to kind of do a, a brief synopsis of the history of the security funding as part of the facility planning process. Uh, we got $9 million appropriated from the legislature in the 1516 biennium. Later that year, uh, we re released the assessment that was done, uh, and we determined that, well, I shouldn't say we, the assessment team determined that the most bang for the buck would be to address eight of the 20 elements with the $9 million that was available. The 20 elements were not prioritized in any manner, uh, but this was the way for us to address as many elements as possible out of the gate with the initial funding that we got. So those uh, those assessments are available and they're part of your security report and aim if you want to go and look at that at some point in time. I believe Terry already has. Uh, 
but that kind of shows the intent of what the remedy was to bring the deficiency up to an acceptable standard. That's not necessarily to say that that's exactly what you have to do in regards to that element. We want to leave a little bit of local control uh, there for the districts to determine what's going to serve their needs best in, in addressing that deficiency. Um, let's see here. I know that Terry and I have been working quite a bit to see what we can do. I, I think the district's got some other priorities in regards to those eight elements, and we've ended up creating some projects that didn't exist and eliminating some others. I just wanted to reiterate that in doing that, um, by moving those funds off of that specific element and deficiency, uh, there won't be any future capital funds available for the district to work with on that particular element. Um, we did want to go and ask for some additional funding to move a little further down the list on the other elements, but uh, because of the slow rollout of expenditures uh, statewide, uh, they asked us to get a little farther along uh, and expend more of the $9 million that was originally appropriated before requesting additional funds for that. That's why we're encouraging districts to get this expended as quickly as possible uh, so that we can address some of those other concerns. There is some uh, districts that have been able to secure a grant from Homeland Security for security related issues and elements that weren't necessarily addressed in this round of funding or maybe even in the 20 elements that we discussed. I uh, don't know if uh, you're familiar with that process. Uh, I'm not particularly, but uh, I could certainly put you in touch with some other districts that have been able to get that funding and they might be able to help you along a little bit more than, than what I'm able to. Amber's included some contact information for you in this facility plan report. And if that's something that you're interested in pursuing, and, and maybe you already have, I don't know. Go on to that. Um, Go ahead. I, I looked. I looked at the information Amber sent, and that raised some questions. So, if if you've got a contact that's already worked through that grant application process, that would be helpful. Yeah, I can I can tell you which districts have been able to get some and they could probably help you out a lot more than, than what I'm able to. All right, thanks. One other thing I do want to touch on is uh, that the, the original funding for these elements included the actual hard cost for the work to be done. It's been our experience that not all costs have come in uh, in accordance with those estimates. Uh, specifically, there was no soft costs included, such as design. Uh, the districts uh, allowed to use major maintenance to supplement in situations and circumstances where it qualifies for major maintenance. But just in case you find yourself in a position such as uh, software or a new system that doesn't currently exist uh, where you don't have enough funding. The legislature uh, allowed for 10% of one year's allocation of your major maintenance funds to be expended for safety and security related items uh, that wouldn't normally qualify for regular major maintenance. And I don't want to go into a lot of detail and bore you with uh, the best way to determine what the intent was, I touched on it a little bit earlier with the security info report, but there's also other resources available out there on our website, such as the security remedy guide uh, that, that, that help educate you and what the assessment team's expectations were uh, in addressing those deficiencies. So 
if there's any question at all, Terry, I know you and I have had quite a bit of conversation about it, but I don't know um, how much Ray knows about it or what his interest is in that regard. I'm certainly available anytime anybody wants to give me a phone call. We can walk through it. I can show you where all that information is. We do have a security conference that's uh, going to be going on next week on Tuesday. March 13th, down in Riverton. It's sponsored by Fremont 24. And essentially, it's going to be the same team that presented last October up in Casper. Uh, I know they're filling up pretty fast on that, so if that's something you're interested in, I'd encourage you to get a hold of Cave quickly and RSVP to that event. Uh, very educational, very entertaining, and well worth the time. Did, did you guys attend? Did you guys attend the one in Casper? Last no, week? but there'll be three of us down there next week. Okay, and that was uh, at just an outstanding conference. It was very, very good. And my understanding is the the speaker at this one is one of those speakers, and he's he's excellent. Yeah, he's he's certainly up to speed on security and very emotional about it. So. Yeah, he's engaging, no doubt. Yeah. So that's no, just with, uh, my little speech about the history of our security funding, but I wanted to let you know that uh, your amendment to the, the TSP contract is on, Shel on Shelby's desk as of yesterday. Uh, I was able to create all the projects that you requested in AIM. I moved the construction money dollars to the project lines per your request. I have not encumbered those yet because I thought we'd wait and see where your bids came in at. But I, I have requested the encumbrance of the funds necessary to execute that amendment with the exception of the, the elements that are not inclusive of the eight that were funded which was only one for your request. It was, I believe, video systems. And yeah. the major maintenance portion of that design and contract that's going out. But that doesn't mean that we're not committed to give you all the available funds for the eight elements when they come in. So we'll take a look and see uh, where your bids are at when the bids come in and what's available. We may end up having to adjust those construction dollars a little bit. But I think that we were able to cover about $18,900 roughly of the $24,300 of the design that, that you had requested. And all that paperwork should be included in the backup documentation to the authorization letter. As soon as Shelby sends that, uh, TSP as well as uh, Ray and Terry will be getting a digital copy of all that information. If you have any questions about it or if you have any difficulty reading it it's it's quite complicated uh, please give me a call and I'll be happy to walk through that with you as well but I it should be executed probably by the end of the week for sure okay just FYI the construction bids are due April the 10th awesome well, so, I mean, TSP is behind schedule, but I think we're we're nearly there. The the late work on some of the projects that we created and the money moves that we had to do were quite extensive. But I think that um, everything's set, so the next phase of this security project, I guess, the construction phase should go much more efficiently and, and, and approval will come a lot quicker than what we saw with the design. But okay. we were waiting for quite some time for TSP to provide us with a breakdown of their fees. That was what drove right. a majority of the delay. Okay, but we're good. We're up and running now. District, we good on that security now? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hey, your other major maintenance projects probably be a piece of cake compared to this, huh? You're right. Okay. 
Well, that sounds good, then. Uh, we'll move on. Thank you, John. I'm always, uh, I always admire John's thorough knowledge, uh, knowledge of all this stuff. So it's appreciated his expertise, and he's a great guy. Uh, capacity. Very good. So, as for our methodology that was updated in June, um, we've broken down all the capacity information for your buildings. So, for the, the biggest change was in the elementary schools. And, for example, Wapiti and Valley um, were not greatly affected by those, but those being rural schools, that's why we have them separate from the in-town schools. So, we have the in-town schools there, uh, Eastside, Sunset, and Glen, Livingston, and we put the overall district total for that just because we have to look at it as a whole for the in-town. So uh, overall though, uh, <coughs> not, uh, 76 are 0.55% for the in-town schools as an overall whole. So overall looking, at, looking good on that. But no, uh, no high priority, no, no pro uh, capacity priorities at this time. Uh, just looking at your overall uh, district numbers, it's always good to look through these. And you guys, in the last, our, our enrollment projection methodology shoots or looks 10 years in, uh, 10 years prior to today's date, looks at that. Uh, you guys, your average class coming in in kindergarten, it's 163 students. Um, so you guys are pretty close in the last several years, uh, pretty close to right on uh, that average. Uh, your K through six numbers uh, uh, per class looks like are about 158, and then your seven through 12, those closed classes are 151. So obviously you do have more students uh, in younger grades, and then there is some attrition. Uh, we always do like to look over here uh, in your percentages. You guys have really, really pretty darn good percentages, except the junior year. Uh, you've got a 99% survival rate, but other than that, if you were to take just your percentages for first grades for survival, first grade through uh, 12th grade, you know, you're looking at pretty well 100% um, 100 survival with regard for students staying in your system. And how this works is, again, like kindergarten in 2015 advances to 2016 first grade, so it was 144, 130, and then the next next year they were 130 so it's just kind of a diagonal process as they go from grade to grade year to year uh, so you guys are really in reality quite stable uh, I know you guys were uh, probably about a hundred more ten years ago uh, students but you guys are extremely stable community when it comes to enrollment anything anything addition you want to add to that no And when we see a trend across the state, the junior year it seems to be the hardest year around the state in terms of students to deal with. That's where their biggest uh, loss is there, that junior year. And that's common for almost every, every single, single school yeah. district in the entire state. So looking at your kindergarten to first grade survival rate, um, we know that some Ray, some some districts have kind of a, uh, they, basically they have two years of kindergarten. Uh, and they they actually enroll them as kindergarten, and then if they're not developmentally ready to go to first grade, they uh, uh, basically extend that kindergarten into a second year and then advance into first grade. It doesn't look like you're doing that. It, it almost looks like maybe you're screening those students uh, prior to kindergarten, and if they're not developmentally ready, are they pretty well uh, uh, staying outside the, the, the K-12 system until the next year? Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, Troy, I'm not sure who asked the question, but I guess. It's Troy, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, I I think if, if you're wondering about the, the kindergarten, yeah, we, we encourage uh, anybody that's thinking about sending their child to school to come into the screening but um, we have a lot of people who are undecided and I think you probably find that a little more with the more affluent families they can afford to pay for another year of daycare and so forth and so 
that's not uncommon. Um, and that's kind of what our data shows us. So I think when you look at our overall enrollment, um, for whatever reason, Cody had a little spike back in 2011, and now it's kind of flatlined. Um, we're not really growing or losing significant numbers. It's pretty flat, and probably where we'll stay at least for the next few years. Right. Well, that's good news. You're not going down. That's a, a blessing. And uh, I guess I, you know, some districts are still growing. I think we're going to talk about that really quick here. So, okay. Well, thank you for just reviewing that with us at data. And it's nice to see that you're at minimal stable. So. Uh, this doesn't have effect on you necessarily, but uh, we always like to share just statewide that we do have some capacity challenges still. Absolutely. So, Ray and Terry, this is more for your information <coughs> than anything. Uh, per our policy 2013-20, we have to every year prioritize our high capacity needs. And high priority is above 100%. Medium is between 90 and 95%, and low is between 90 and 95%. And uh, right now, you know, for us, the biggest thing on there, you know, we're looking currently at Rock Springs. We're in the middle of a study with them, looking to see what we're going to do in the intermediate with them. And then, uh, you know, just always monitoring the enrollment of the medium priorities as well. And just kind of keeping an eye on the others. So more for your information than anything. Okay. Uh, your major maintenance calculations, allowable square footage. Absolutely. So. Uh, Ray and uh, Terry, one of the things we get asked a lot is how do we calculate major maintenance and, and how is it that we come up with these figures? And so, um, so for your information, the big uh, drivers for major maintenance is your ATM, your average daily membership, and that drives an allowable square footage. And so for your district, you look at, um, you're basically, you have, you're getting paid for 300, or this is last year's figures, you got paid for 346,960 square feet, and in reality, you have 593,816 square feet of educational square footage. And that's, uh, you know, for us, there's a couple things that, that points out for us, and uh, one of them is, is that, you know, there's a gap in the major maintenance funding. Um, this past summer, we went out and tried to raise the RS means number to 221, which is that's how we go up your replacement costs. That goes into the major maintenance calculator, and then raise this current replacement value of your buildings from two percent to two and a half percent, which would have increased the major maintenance for your district. Unfortunately, all those measures failed, with an exception of one. Uh, the seven-year phase in uh, was eliminated. As of right now, um, it's on the governor's desk in House Bill 33. Um, it passed the Senate and the, lead, and the uh, House, and uh, right now it's laying on the governor's desk for the seven-year phase and elimination, and that's the only thing that really survived in all of our efforts. Do you have any phases? I don't think uh, you guys have. No, Your, Sunset was built in 2011, so yeah. it's... So, so for some school districts, it's really a blessing because they have new buildings and they're getting, they will get 100% major maintenance based on ADM. You, it will not have an effect, but... You can see where you guys are about 250,000 square feet of, of uh, actual square footage, education square footage that you're really not getting funded for. So we're trying to bridge that gap, Ray, and uh, we really we really made a really good effort, and the commission made a good effort, and uh, that those did not uh, survive the legislative session. So that was kind of disappointing for us. Um, we're hoping maybe districts will join us next year to. To maybe uh, try to try to make another run at, uh, or actually the year after, uh, for the biennium, but make another run at, at major maintenance and see if maybe we can increase major maintenance to to help you guys take care of your buildings. You do not, yeah, Troy. Oh, go ahead, Troy. This is Ray. I. I think what you were suggesting, um, as far as districts more in lobbying to make that happen, um, would be a, a good idea. And, may, and maybe you did a lot of that this year, I guess. I'm not sure I recognized those efforts because we certainly could have uh, got behind that 
certainly I could have done more than I, I did because I didn't do a whole lot with it. But maybe that's a good action item for next year. This legislative budget or this budget year was pretty full, obviously. So uh, I like the idea of looking at that next year. Thank you, Ray. Well, uh, I think uh, it's an opp opportunity for us to do a better job at making sure that you guys are familiar with what we're trying to do. Uh, and uh, this next time around, we'll make sure that we engage you guys uh, better and make sure that everybody's familiar with the with the uh, effort to maybe increase major maintenance again. By then, we'll have a new director. We'll see where uh, and governor. And we'll see where they want to go, but uh, hopefully we can uh, inform you guys better and, and, and maybe together as a team, uh, uh, districts as well as uh, the state construction department to move forward and maybe get you guys some more funding. Okay. You do not have a charter school. You do have an alternative uh, educational program, or I should say academy, at 26 students. It's in the... Uh, upper uh, level of your administration building. Um, so that's just something that we acknowledge each year. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing big. I mean, it's, it's an important uh, program for you guys. Uh, we're, uh, I'm, I'm sure that it's helping you guys help these students, uh, at least a lot of them get their, their degrees. So, so this is what year of the, and is the program in right now? I know we started was in 2015 that we started. Ray saying it's in its third year. Third year, okay. Um, how are the graduation rates going for you guys, and uh, how are things? Uh, I, I guess I want to know how the, the success of the program at this point and how it's going. You know, um, this is Ray. The program itself has gone really well. Um, we pick up kids in their mostly junior, senior year. Uh, we've had some students that dropped out of Cody High School, transferred to HMA, and re-enrolled. We've had, a, last year we had a couple of those kids that uh, came back to HMA. Uh, one or two graduated as fifth year seniors, so even though they graduate, they did, even though they earned a degree, they get counted as a dropout because they didn't graduate in four years. Um, but with that in mind, the, the graduation rate for HMA is actually um, well above state average because the year before, I think it was 90% last year. If you counted the fifth year graduates, I think it was it was still above 80 percent. So we we average about 12 seniors graduate, roughly 10 of them, um, and we're talking for the most part kids that if they stayed in a, a traditional school, you probably would you'd be lucky to get 50 percent graduation rate. So. All in all, it's working. Next year, we're going to bump it up and probably we're, we're going to add another teacher over there because we have at least 35 kids that want to be in the program, but we haven't been staffed well enough to handle that. Next year, we're going to shift another teacher over there um, for, the, for that increased population. It's going well. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Ray. Uh, oh, I had one other question, just out of curiosity. Do you have a walk with uh, a graduation with your uh, with your other high school students, or do they have a, their own graduation ceremony? Separate. Separate. Yeah, it's separate. All right. Okay, condition. Uh, this is just a really good illustration of a uh, visual for taking care of buildings. And uh, I know for those of you who have been in this a long time, it's, it's uh, it, it, 
not trying to insult your intelligence at all, but you know, it's uh, interesting, Ray, and I don't know what your uh, what the actual percentage is, but we've been told, you know, quite frequently about 25% of the the uh, superintendents in the state change over each year in one way, shape, or form, either moving from a, a district to another district or retiring or, or leaving the state. Um, so that's probably the highest turnover. Uh, facility, facility directors are probably the next highest. Uh, out of the business manager, superintendent, and facility directors, and then business managers seem to be the most stable positions. But uh, for us, it's really interesting because we get these new personnel on a regular basis across the state. And uh, uh, sometimes, you know, if you're focused on education and don't have a facilities management background in any way, shape, or form, uh, we just want to make sure that we help those those uh, those people as much as we can in their new position. So. Uh, taking care of buildings, of course, <laughs> has a direct influence on uh, education, education and educational achievement uh, and uh, staff morale and stuff like that. Uh, preventive and routine maintenance is an important part of any building to the life cycle and how you take care of it is obviously important for the lifespan of the building to see how long uh, it serves the students and staff as well as how well it serves. Uh, as you guys know, major maintenance is, is that... Uh, uh, money and fun, fund source that helps as a building ages to take care of those deferred maintenance costs uh, that are maybe not major capital, but they need to be taken care of along the way. And then as a building ages, we get to a point where we need to decide, you know, what's the most cost effective remedy, either renovating or replacing the building. And those studies come uh, later on in, in the life cycle of the building. Uh, and then obviously, if we're driven by capacity needs or something, <laughs> Uh, in the past, we've also done upgrades uh, to buildings as we've dealt with capacity at times as systems are low or in need of uh, help or, or expansion for a, an addition or something. We take care of uh, some condition issues when we deal with capacity as well. Uh, across the state, this is just page one of many pages. Uh, we have about 450 educational buildings across state. Uh, this is the upper echelon of that list for facility condition index, and uh, obviously the higher the, the facility index number on the building, the more deferred maintenance uh, is correlating to that score. Uh, and then everything at about a point four and above is has been requested in some way, shape, or form, or there's some kind of planning study going on to address it with capital funds. Um, of course, we, we don't know what the legislative session is going to turn out. Uh, up until up through the house um, and what they did, uh, we had over $200 million worth of uh, facilities related requests that, uh, that were going toward appropriation. The Senate, of course, is much more conservative economically and uh, cut a lot. And we know that a lot of negotiations going to occur probably between now and Tuesday. We don't know what that looks like, but uh, uh, we're hoping that uh, maybe, maybe uh, at least most, if not all of that, will survive. We'll see what happens. For you guys, uh, your buildings, for the most part, you do have like your stock activity centers, a 0.32. That may be one of your highest ones on the educational realm. But you guys have really, actually, really good buildings from a facility uh, condition um, perspective. Uh, so, and I know you guys are uh, using your major maintenance and, and you guys are aware that we have uh, component funding out there that kind of bridges the gap uh, between uh, really major maintenance and major capital requests. Uh, and we'll look at that in just a moment. Your, uh, and we'll have a talk about uh, this one, your bus barn yard uh, uh, building is at four three. These are ancillary buildings. And down here, you did make a comment, and if I may just skip this, we'll get, we'll, we will get back to the bus barnyard uh, building, and uh, I'll tell you kind of a comment with regard to response to your, uh, your wondering about, you know, when's possible funding for that. Major maintenance, uh, Tom, we know that you uh, do fill out your 680 uh, report each year, basically reconciling your 680 account. Uh, with your expenditures. We appreciate that. This is just last year's expenditures. It's just for illustrative purposes. We didn't have really any other objective, but uh, uh, simply see where you're spending, spending your major maintenance and, and to illustrate that. These were your priorities last year 
numeric value, and then a breakdown by systems per, per building. Uh, so you guys, obviously, last year you spent $1.3 million. Here's your low condition scores, uh, and I'm sure you're very familiar with the fact that we'll go out about every four years. That will, uh, I will actually be, amazingly so, we'll be procuring probably uh, a consultant to go out and assess the buildings uh, probably next, next year. We'll do that next fall. We'll do that procurement, and then in the uh, 2020 Summer of two, spring, summer of 2020, they'll come out and they'll reassess all your buildings again. Uh, the great thing about that is they don't have to do like floor measurements or anything like that. Just the assessments. Yeah, just assessments. So that should go really well. Um, we've collected a really good uh, historical database of, of this score, this information, uh, and which I think has really helped the accuracy of the assessments as well and a really good uh, review process allowing districts to uh, review the information that uh, end up uh, uh, using, uh, that are used by the assessment team in order to score to make sure they've captured everything. So I think historically, I think we're getting better and better at providing them good information. The other challenges too in that is that, again, district personnel changeover. So uh, because we have such a good database now, I think that we're able to fill in gaps if there's change of personnel and there's a lack of knowledge of a building. Uh, you guys have quite a few uh, two scores, uh, ones and twos. One is failure and two is poor. We know that's probably a little small for you over there. Um, here, uh, there's a failure here. We do ask districts, we don't demand, we just ask districts, what are you doing about your low condition scores? You guys are, are really prioritizing those, obviously. Um, you have some others that uh, you're saying, you know, maybe five years, maybe four years, maybe whatever. Uh, and then you guys are aware of, as you look at the higher dollar, if you're up in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands, uh, a lot of districts uh, prioritize like roofs uh, and other things like that. HVAC is a popular one, but they uh, often ask for the ancillary, I'm sorry, for the component funding project uh, uh, requests to supplement major maintenance if their major maintenance isn't able to, to uh, manage or handle those low condition remedies. Uh, those are due, I don't know, uh, so, Terry, if, if you participated or uh, uh, in, uh, participated in the webinar we did on component funding or not? Yeah, I was in on that. Okay, so you're very familiar with that. We've not really attempted to uh, identify or or uh, submit a component fund request, but I'm aware of it. Okay. As long as you're aware of that, that's good. And just know, you know, by the time you submit to when you get that money, it is at, at a minimum of two years. So, uh, yeah. uh, so just know that if you do see things coming up and they're hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you're not able to kind of work that in with your major maintenance and, and you see that maybe you're gonna trash a million dollars your major maintenance, not trash it, but use it, but you have these other needs, uh, please please uh, feel free to, and John's really good at this, the PMs uh, are more than willing to help you also, but uh, kind of look that over and, and see if there's opportunities and keep that long-term vision there. Uh, just thinking, you know, in two years from now, uh, if I put in for this, this would probably help me, and I and you can justify it. You guys are are not looking bad at all. Obviously, your uh, and, you know your balance. Uh, you know this is a, just a snapshot at the end of February, but your balance looks like it'll be give or take about uh, 1.2 million. If you get your next uh, anticipated major maintenance payment, it'll be approximately 1.3. So you'll have about 2.5. So. From a from a major maintenance balance point standpoint, you're looking you're looking fairly good. Uh, we always ask you to clean up the database if you have you've all you reported all the payment uh, the expenditures on 680 form and those have all been then the next year you can close those out and so we appreciate you closing out projects that are done and these are work in progress or open. I don't expect you to read that. You don't have to read that. Uh, but uh, we do have you clean up your work orders on an annual basis. Uh, with regard to component funding, uh, one through six, to, last year the governor and, uh, well, the legislature took $21 million, set it aside for uh, component funding. 
we, uh, the, the governor approved uh, projects, and um, so that was just a phenomenal help to a lot of districts. This is this year's request going into the biennium budget. These are still in there at 10.5 million, and you can see anything from roofs to heaters to cooling towers to plumbing, uh, and then we have a committee statewide that uh, made up of school districts that helps prioritize these. One through 16 are still in the legislation moving forward to appropriation. Hopefully they'll survive, and then 17 through 37 were not requested. They didn't make the cutoff. Uh, so I guess the question for you is on major maintenance. Um, how do you prioritize your major maintenance projects from year to year? Do you have a committee? Do you have upper administration? Does it run through your school board? Just talk about that just a little. We go through and do a, a physical inspection with all the administrators. We talk about what they believe there needs to be and, and then look at the, uh, the condition assessment and work to try to to uh, put the uh, lower condition assessments ahead of some of the what I'd call wish list items and then we once we get that plan Ray and I'll go through it and then it'll go to the school board generally it's there's not been a lot of discussion at the school board level once once they see that the security items, there's been more discussion on those and what we're doing there than anything else. Well, sounds like good process. Thanks for sharing that. Um, with regard to legislative session, we've got some bills running through. I'll have Charlie kind of review quickly sure, this portion. Absolutely. So House Bill 32 and 33 currently are on the governor's desk. They have passed uh, the House and the Senate. Um, so basically for House Bill 32, uh, they do uh, adjust the language of the statute to include items that will qualify for major maintenance, such as code items, and uh, that's the biggest thing there when the elimination of the seven-year phasing was the other big uh, item in that bill. House Bill 33 just cleans up our emergency language and talks about that there's emergency situation that includes the grounds as well as the building, uh, incorporating that all into that. Uh, House Bill 88 was signed into law as House Enrolled Act last night. Uh, it is, adds a third division to our department. It is now, we have construction management, school facilities, and operations. So this affects us the most, uh, the ones that are, that are currently in the room in Amber um, and John, that we all now operate out of the operations that we can be assigned to projects on both sides of our house. So if we need to do work for the state buildings, or for schools, we can go back and forth, and it helped really clean up the accounting on our on our end for that. So, um, and then uh, our capital construction bill currently right now, um, they're uh, they've made different strides on, and so the House and the Senate are quite a ways apart on these bills. House Bill One and Senate File One. And uh, they're just working to try to close that gap. I don't know where they're at uh, in terms of that, but they've just said a lot of the stats we've been getting is that they're working on those currently. So no, nothing to really report there at this time. The supplemental budget. Um, so basically, the wording within the within the bill that's moving forward just basically says if there's an emergency. Uh, we can ask for during supplemental budget or if there's an unanticipated need or refinement of a present project. Um, so we always ask just to, to be fair, do you guys have an emergency or unanticipated need that needs to be asked for in the supplemental <coughs> budget? Uh, Troy, this is Ray. I, I don't know of any emergencies. Um, Unanticipated need, we've talked about our bus garage, um, but we don't need to discuss that. We're, we're trying to work some things out locally. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll let you know. I, I don't know if you guys could, 
if you're able to find money for it or not anyway. I guess if you if you ever find money for bus garages, we'd be interested. You bet. Yeah, uh, and this, thank you, Ray, and that leads into some comments here you guys made, and, and uh, basically what I put here, I kind of responded to that already. I thought, kind of thought it through, and unfortunately at this time limited, uh, and we all know this, right, limited capital funding from the state and the prioritization of educational buildings before ancillary buildings, along with six ancillary buildings being above yours, uh, the SFD does not anticipate any available funding for years to come. And that's unfortunately the sad story. I did put in here just on, on the ancillary building that we do have these uh, that are actually a little bit higher than yours in need. Uh, and uh, and just to be totally honest, uh, we don't anticipate any money going toward ancillary building sometime here. Well, Troy, if there's a bus barn out there worse than ours, you should probably be condemning it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think they're <laughs> probably right. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd, I don't know what the bus garages are like in some of these other places, but um, anyway, it, it doesn't matter. We understand where we're at with that. Okay. Well, sorry about that. I mean, I, I wish, uh, I wish it was five years ago and uh, we had, uh, we, you know, we could, we could put in uh, 50 to 100 million on ancillary buildings. That would be just awesome. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Yeah. Okay. I understand. All right. Uh, so, with that, district um, is just to give you the last opportunity. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss that we haven't discussed this morning? Yeah. Troy, I don't, I don't have anything to add. I, I think. Um, Terry and I have been talking, as Terry mentioned, we're looking at a lot of security projects. Um, we're, we're probably going to spend more of our major maintenance money on security projects than what we thought even six months ago, um, which is fine. That's, that's where everybody's head is at the moment, not only, not only in Cody, but obviously across the country. And I don't have a good reason to uh, sit on $600,000 of major maintenance money and and delay some of these security upgrades that we've already identified. Um, that would not be wise. So I've been asking Terry to uh, do what he can to move those forward as quickly as possible and We'll probably spend more major maintenance money on security than we thought we would, but we, we're still going to have a sufficient reserve, you know, if a boiler goes down or whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. Um, but we are going to spend more major maintenance money on security. It's, it has, consumed most everybody's attention, at least in Cody for the last three months. And I don't see that changing. And I'm, I've am i been asked more questions this year about, you name it, from cameras to door locks, et cetera. And I'm on a superintendent's email list and I've seen more questions come across there the last two months where based on what I'm reading, the conversation that we're having here in Cody is happening almost everywhere. Everybody's being hit up with single point of entry and, and cameras and door locks and you name it. Um, things that I never thought we would be talking about. People talking about putting, uh, what do they call it? those ballast or ballards, whatever they put in front of a building so people can't drive a car into it. Drive through the doors. I think that, that gives you an idea of where where people are panicking and uh, and 
rightfully, I don't, you know, panic is probably not a good idea, but I think we've been a little bit um, maybe behind the times as far as security and sometimes we can get a little too comfortable in Wyoming and, and we've had a wake up call that we need to do more and so we plan to do more. That's all I have. Yeah, it's uh, encouraging in one one way and sad in another. And uh, but we do appreciate you guys. And yeah, that's what those major maintenance funds are for. And and then don't forget, you got those ten percent security funds. We did forget to tell you one thing. Um, uh, up in there on the ten percent security funds, again, uh, if you've got things that do not qualify, I mean, it can be used for any security need. Uh, so it doesn't have to qualify for the major maintenance definition to use those. So, I, and I know that uh, I think John was very clear on that, but that 124225 is a great resource for that kind of stuff that doesn't qualify for major maintenance. And then the other thing we've got to tell you is that in one of the bills uh, that are moving through, uh, there is language in there out of the, it, out of the next payment in July if it remains, you guys will get another 10% security, so you'll you'll double this this amount that can be used on things that do not qualify for major maintenance as well as that do, as long as they're security related. Okay. Okay, with that then, staff, anything else? No, nope, thank you for all that um, you guys have done to get ready for this. Thank you, Amber, for all your work. Okay, with that then, I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your day. We look forward to seeing you in person sometime. I know John will be I'll up there. I'll see you Tuesday. Okay. Ray, yeah. are you going to that? You know, I planned on it, but then I had a, another meeting scheduled Wednesday, and I don't know if I can be out two days in a row. Gotcha. I'm going to let Terry handle it. He's very capable. He's laughing as he says that. <laughs> no, no, not why I am. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks a lot, right. guys. I'm going to go ahead and end our meeting then. Take care. All, All right. right. Thanks. Bye.